is. Okay, let's go on. The next one is good. The miracle does nothing just because the minds are joined and cannot separate. Yet in the dreaming has this been reversed, and separate minds are seen as bodies, which are separated and which cannot join. Do not allow your brother to be sick, for if he is, you have abandoned him to his own dream by sharing it with him. He has not seen the cause of sickness where it is, and you have overlapped, overlooked the gap between you where the sickness has been bred. Thus are you joined in sickness to preserve the little gap unhealed, where sickness is kept carefully protected, cherished, and upheld by firm belief, lest God should come to bridge the little gap that leads to him. Fight not his coming with illusions, for it is his coming that you want above all things that seem to glisten in the dream. I was a little confused though about like <clears throat> when children get sick like and have leukemia or mm -hmm. something of that nature and um, things happen. How is this agreement coming out? I mean, well, it would be more of an agreement on a, a spiritual level, that we are just bodies and that we are subject to outside force. And it's more of an agreement there that whatever is going on is caused by the physical world. So that would be where the agreement is. It would, this is talking about we're not agreeing with these kinds of ideas, that we are in a state of mind or in a state of health caused by outside events. Now, if you agree that someone was sick because of something outside, you're agreeing with the dream. You're agreeing with Pleasure. their sickness, even though you're being very supportive of them. Yes, yeah, see, you're agreeing with the idea you can be, you're, you're at the effect of outside forces. I, I, I guess I, I can connect the dots, like, say, like, being a supporter of St. Jude's Hospital and all of the good work that they do there and being, you know, I, I don't know. You can do both because the Course is saying, um, because we're afraid of healing, we need these magic wands, we need the magic pills, and we need the hospitals and everything. But your mind, when you're trying to do this, is serving a higher identity that recognizes that even though it appears that this is what's happening, and I'm even going to use the mechanisms of this world to help heal it because it, it allays the fear, that's really not what's going on. There's another level of healing that's really more important, that's going to have more effects. That's all it's saying. It's not saying to ignore this stuff oh, or not okay. to even do this stuff because we're too afraid of healing to just take it directly. He says, well, you're in this fearful state. Use all the potions and pills because it'll be because the reason is this. It looks like the pills and the potions are doing it, but really it was your decision to get healed that allowed the potion to work. So it really was your decision to heal, to be healed. Because, you know, some people take the same medicine, they don't get well. And some people take the medicine and they get well, or they shift it to another mm -hmm. disease. But still, it's just, it's, we don't need to fight anything that's used here, or even not use it. We just need to know we want to go as high as possible in our understanding, find our attack uh, thoughts and our guilt, and let it go through forgiveness. And gradually, any manifestation of disease will be healed, and we might be taking potions to, to help us do that. It doesn't really matter. That's kind of not to be concerned. Okay. I was wondering, were you asking a question also about um, how could a child be sick kind of thing? Well, I, you know, I understand that they're just, we spirits of the, you know, all of us are of one mind. Mm -hmm. And I guess, yeah. They're not, even, guess they're they're not even we. They're not even little. No, they're powerful too. I was just reading something, uh, I think it was in the manual, that said, uh, Really, like birth is not a beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, death is not an end. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, they could have made a decision just like we do. It's like Emerson said. He said, "Don't be deceived by that little girl with the golden curls and the dimples. She's a thousand years old." Yeah. Oh, really? Emerson said that, and that's that's the truth. That's what the course is saying. We are as, we are all powerful beings that are causing our own dream, no matter how our bodies appear no matter what it looks like from the outside, we are the cause of it.
And that's a good thing, you see, because then there means there's no victims. You know, otherwise, you know, either the dream holds for everyone, I mean, not the dream, either the truth holds for everyone. If there's one exception, the book is, is you might as well throw it away. If there's one person, one being that doesn't have the power to cause their own dream, that they're actually at effect and a victim, this whole book doesn't apply. It's either everybody or nobody. You see what I'm saying? One, one exception means this isn't true. So what we have to do is realize that even though it looks like this would be an exception, it can't be, and have the truth be true. Because we are all either part of the oneness, or there's not such a thing as oneness. If no. there's one exception, there's no oneness, you see? One exception would, would blow the whole theory of oneness out the window. And that's why he says, don't ever let your mind uh, allow yourself to make an exception or even make any miracle more difficult to another, than another because that, again, is saying the power of God is either powerful all, always or it's not powerful ever. And you're either part of a oneness that's one or there's no oneness, <laughs> you see? There's one exception, right? So that's the way you have to understand it. And that's a good thing because it means the truth is true no matter how convincing, and you know, you remember the purpose of our bodies and our little dream episodes is to deny the truth of oneness and power. So we have some very uh, convincing dramas and dreams of little broken bodies and stuff to do this, to scare us to death. So that's why they're convincing, because that's their purpose. We're trying to deny ourselves everything in our warped and insane mind. Okay, I, I have a question. At the end, we're all going to be laying these bodies gently down. Um, so you're saying your mind could be perfectly fine, and yet your body has it, it has fulfilled its function. I, I guess what I'm trying to think: if your mind is if your mind is not uh, sick, at some point, say your body is going to die. So at some point, my mind can be fine, perfectly mm -hmm. healthy, but this body is going. I mean, it's... Yeah, so, so ideally, he says, that the more you practice forgiveness, mm -hmm. you have no reason to attack your body, so your right. body won't get sick. It'll just, you, one day you'll lay it down. Oh, oh, it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to be sick. sick. Your sickness. No. Oh, I forgot that. No, you just, you just die. Process. And you know, there are people that do just die without being sick first. It's yeah, not, it's kind of like these days not common. Because <laughs> oh, we seem to have to be sick because right. we're really torturing ourselves. But the Course is saying that's not required. That's because of your own attack on yourself. You're attacking yourself. You're punishing yourself for things that you think you've done wrong that deserve it. So you're making yourself sick so you can be punished. Mm -hmm. But that's not required. And, it, and the more you do the nice. miracle working, you're going to need to punish yourself less and less. It's forgiveness you do. So now you get to just lay your body down. And then eventually you understand, like Jesus, you don't lay a body down. It disappears. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate when you're really healed. <laughs> but and then before that, whenever you have a thought of yeah, it again. Yeah, you can make it appear and disappear because it's a dream. Mm -hmm. So remember, that's mm -hmm. ultimate healing. But mm -hmm. before then, we at least get to pursue the goal of dying without sickness. Oh, good. I, thank you. I you like the idea of just, that. I'm tired, my body's getting old, I yeah. want a new one. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's trade it in for a new model. Uh -huh. I don't want to get sick first, I just want to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that, that idea of, um, Suffering and pain is what he's yeah. talking about here. We don't mm -hmm. have to have suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. And it's death just, is like he keeps saying, death is nothing. Yeah, death, yeah. death doesn't exist. We're going to keep on living once we've let go of our body. So death is, but we've kind of wired up that death and sickness are go together. They don't. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Luckily, he's saying this because I like that goal. You know, I don't really want to get sick. <laughs> I don't like that okay, idea. No. I don't want to suffer. That's why I'm on this journey. <laughs> he says it's possible. I'm going to try as hard as I can to do what he says then. Because he says if you don't do what he says, then, well, then I can't guarantee you the outcome. <laughs> but if you do what I tell you to do, no, no sickness. <laughs>